Today, we are going to be talking audio for your videos with the low budget Godox MoveLink wireless microphone system. So stick around. This is going to be the first in possibly a series of videos about audio and different microphones. I've had a few sent to me to check out, so this is just the one we're getting to first. But before all that, Yes, I have to address my absence. Some of you might have noticed that I haven't really posted anything in a while. I had some health issues towards the end of last year and the first few months of this year, but I think that the worst is behind me now. Thank you everybody for all your messages, emails and comments, checking up on me and seeing how I was doing. It'll take me a while to get fully back into the swing of things, but we're going to give this a go. Starting with this microphone, the Godox MoveLink M2. Godox, as some of you will know, is a company famous for its photography strobes and continuous LED lights for video. I featured some of them here on the channel before. Well, now they've branched out into microphones and their entry into the world of compact wireless lav mic systems is the Godox MoveLink. It comes in two flavors. There's the MoveLink M1 and the MoveLink M2, which come with one or two transmitters respectively. The one I have here is the MoveLink M2, the dual microphone kit. Inside the box, we're not confronted with much. There's a little manual, a black box, a gray box with Godox written on it, and a couple of fluffy things. So let's go through them. This is the charging case and it lets you charge up all three devices with a single USB cable on the end there. If we open it up, you can see all three devices inside. And if we pull one of them out, you can see the connection points there and the little, whoops, and the little magnet that holds it in place. Each transmitter features a built-in microphone as well as a three and a half mil TRS socket for plugging in an external lav mic. And both the transmitters and the receiver have an OLED display on the front to let you see what's going on. The receiver offers headphone monitoring as well as audio output to your camera via a TRS cable or smartphone with a TRRS cable. Both the transmitters and the receiver feature a belt clip. This might seem a little odd on the receiver given that it's going into the camera, but the back part of the clip is just the right width and thickness to slide into your standard hot shoe. And then the spring holds it firm. They run on 2.4 gigahertz and offer a maximum official range of 50 meters and feature frequency hopping technology to minimize interference from Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals that might be in the area. We'll go through the rest of the features as we work our way through this video, but let's go into the rest of this stuff we have. So inside the black box, we have a wired lav, a TRS cable, TRRS cable, another wired lav, Oh, a couple of magnetic little sticky dots or metal dots. And we have a type A to type C USB cable, a little lanyard and two more USB cables. So as well as being able to charge in the case, Godox has included three separate USB cables so that if you do want to charge each one individually instead of the using the case, you can do that too. Now, this is the Godox MoveLink M2 kit. So you can see here that there are two included lavalier microphones. And we've also got two fluffy windshields here too. Unfortunately, these aren't for the lav mics. The lav mics don't come with fluffy windshields, just foam ones. These ones clip onto the transmitter. They pop on like this. And that's it. And they block the internal microphone from wind. But it's a bit of a lump when this is clipped to your chest. So speaking of clipping to your chest, there are these little magnetic discs that I mentioned a second ago when I pulled them out of the box. These let you avoid the clip bunching up your shirt or whatever you happen to be wearing that you're attaching it to. Attaching this to your neckline doesn't always look the best and sometimes you might want the microphone just a little further away from your chin. So you can use the magnetic clips to attach the transmitter to another part of your shirt that perhaps doesn't sag so much or just a spot that picks up your voice a little better. All right, now we've been through all the bits, let's have a listen and see how they sound. And it doesn't say, there isn't a specific end that it says is for the receiver and the camera, so I guess it can go either way. Alrighty, so now you're listening to the built-in microphone on the Godox MoveLink transmitter. Not this one, obviously, because it's turned off, but the one that's clipped to my chest. And the receiver's plugged straight into the audio input on my Panasonic GH5. I've done nothing to this in post except to loudness normalize it to minus 14 LUFS. You'll notice that this sounds nothing like the microphone you were just listening to, but that's because that one was the Rode NTG5 shotgun mic 
being processed through an expander, a compressor, and an EQ. The Godox microphone is going straight into the camera with no processing whatsoever. So this is me talking into the Godox MoveLink transmitter, and this is me now shutting up so you can hear the ambient noise. Do bear in mind some of the hiss you might hear maybe down to the camera itself. Okay, so this is how the microphone sounds going into the GH5. You might hear a little hum in the background. I'm trying to use this microphone in the kind of environment you might be using it in yourself, which means your computer's probably going to be turned on. So that slight hum, if you heard it, is the fan inside my PC. Now we're going to change things up a little bit and feed the sound directly into the computer, which you might do if you're live streaming or, I don't know, recording a voiceover. I picked up the Behringer Euphoria UMC404 HD recently, along with all these other bits for another project I'm working on. It's a USB audio interface that provides me with four input channels that I can record all at once to separate files. Inputs one and two go through all this stuff down here below, and channels three and four just go straight into the computer with no processing whatsoever. So I am going to be using this splitter cable to plug the receiver into channels three and four. So now you're hearing the receiver plugged directly into the Behringer USB audio interface, completely clean without any processing, recorded straight into Adobe Audition, and I'm using the internal microphone built into the transmitter clipped into my shirt. I'll go silent now so you can hear how the noise and the room ambient sounds through the USB interface. We'll leave it plugged into the computer for now and I'll go over some of the features of the transmitters and the receiver. First up, the receiver. Here we've got two outputs on top. One goes to your camera's microphone input or the USB audio interface in this case, and one going to a pair of headphones to let you monitor the audio that's going into your camera. Handy if your camera doesn't have a headphone jack of its own. On one side, we have the power button as well as up and down buttons for adjusting the gain on the two transmitter channels. And on the other side, we've got the pair button, which also doubles up as a button to switch between mono and stereo. In stereo mode, one transmitter goes to the left channel and the other goes to the right. In mono mode, both transmitters, or one transmitter if you're only using one, gets sent to both channels. If you're recording something like a two-person interview where you have two people being recorded on separate microphones, you'll want it in stereo so that you can adjust each person individually in the edit to make sure that one isn't significantly louder or quieter than the other. If you're just recording yourself with a single transmitter, stereo still works, but having the receiver send out a mono signal potentially can make your life a little easier when editing because you won't have to worry about the sound only coming out of one side. I think Godox missed the trick with this feature though, because there doesn't appear to be a way to send a safety channel if you're only using a single microphone. A safety channel is a copy of the mono signal sent down the second channel at a lower gain setting, typically minus 20 decibels. This way, if your subject starts talking too loudly and clips on the main recording, you've still got that lower volume second channel to fall back to. On each transmitter, you've got very little at all. On the top, you've got the built-in microphone and the socket for a plug-in lav. On one side, we've got power and mute buttons, and on the other, we've got the pairing button, which is largely unneeded as these pair really well all by themselves. You can see on the receiver here that it's already paired up with one transmitter. That's the one you're listening to right now. And if I turn on the second, you'll see that this automatically pairs up on the second channel. And there you can see both of the little meters going up as I talk. One of the great things I like about this system versus my old wireless lab setup is that the transmitters aren't bound to channel A or B. It's first comes, first served. Whichever transmitter gets turned on first, that's channel A. Whichever one gets turned on second is channel B. This might take some getting used to if you're on a set with a whole bunch of mics and you rely on having certain voices coming in through certain channels, but for solo shooting, run and gun stuff, vlogging, live streaming, not having to spend time figuring out which is your A and B transmitter definitely helps speed up the workflow a bit. So now that we've heard the built-in microphone, how does the supplied lav sound? The first test is with the supplied lavalier microphone that comes with the move link system and that's what you're listening to right now i've got it plugged into the transmitter here and i've got it clipped onto my shirt in theory the sound coming from the lav mic should be clearer than the built-in microphone although the built-in mic didn't sound that bad to me in tests i'd done before i started shooting this video this is the first time i'm trying it with an external lav though so you're listening to this at the same time i am now I'll go quiet again so you can hear the noise and the ambient difference between the two. 
Okay, and now I'm going to swap over to the Rode Lavalier 2. Okay, slight change of plan. I was going to show you the Rode Lavalier 2 and let you hear how that sounds with it. But the Lavalier 2 doesn't go all the way in because this is a screw link fitting. The screw fits around the connection um, that this doesn't have. So it doesn't actually hold in. But never mind, we'll carry on with this one. And I'm going to leave this plugged in now for the rest of the video. OK, now that we've gone over its features, let's talk a little bit about what's missing, what's not so great and what could be improved. First, we'll talk about the features it doesn't have that people are starting to come to expect from microphones like these today. The first is internal recording on the transmitters. The Rode Wireless Go 2 does it. So does the Comica Boom XD Pro, the Lensgo 348C and a few others. But it's a feature that's missing from the Godox MoveLink. While this might be a deal breaker for some, I found the wireless signal to be pretty solid so far and I haven't missed having that backup file because I haven't really needed it. That being said, I haven't really done the long range outdoor test with this yet. Those will be coming in a future video, but indoors there's plenty of potential 2.4 gigahertz interference in here that doesn't seem to have been an issue. Another perhaps less common feature that's starting to appear in most small microphones now is USB connectivity. And I don't just mean a little USB dongle to add a TRRS socket to your smartphone. I'm talking about your computer or smartphone seeing the receiver as an actual digital audio device. Again, the Rode Wireless Go 2 can do this and so does the Comica Boom XD Pro, but the Godox MoveLink does not. With as many people as there are out there now live streaming, podcasting, vlogging or just chatting on Skype and Zoom, being able to skip your computer's preamps and go straight into the USB port with a digital audio signal typically brings a noticeable improvement in audio quality. When it comes to what's not so great and what could be improved, probably the biggest thing that sticks out to me is the muting of the transmitters. Each transmitter has a little button on the side of it so that your talent can mute the microphone whenever they wish. After all, nobody wants to take a bathroom break wearing a hot mic. Speaking of which, it'd be nice if the receiver could mute the transmitters remotely too. It works well, it mutes when it's on and it doesn't when it's off, but the big issue with it is that it's not very clear from looking at it whether you're muted or not. So when you hit the mute button, the little microphone logo on the OLED display gets crossed out to tell you that it's off. But well, that's it. If you've got this pack on your waist and you hit the button, especially if it's hidden underneath an outfit, you can't always easily see the display to check if you're muted or not. There's also no indication of the mute status on the receiver itself. It doesn't tell me if someone's pressed the button. So if nobody's talking and you just assume your mics are good to go without actually listening to them and hitting record, you might find you've recorded nothing. So you'll want to make sure to get your talent to say something to ensure the level meters on the receiver are going up as expected. If they're not, have them check if their microphone's muted. Another thing that's slightly annoying is the charging case. It fits the receiver and two transmitters perfectly and it has a single type C socket on the side for just one cable. And when you plug everything, they all charge up great. So what's the problem? Well, there's no room to actually fit the charging cable inside the case with these or the wind muffs, or the audio cables, or the wired labs. So you'll have to remember to pack all those somewhere else that you won't forget them when you need them. With all that lot being said though, these are only problems if they're a problem for you. If you're always sending audio into the camera and you're recording with the internal mic and you're confident you'll get no Wi-Fi interference and you can stay on top of the whole muting thing, then the sound quality from these is pretty good. The other thing to remember is that while this might not have all the features of the competition, it also doesn't come with the same price tag, coming in at only $200 for the two mic kit or $140 for the single lav kit. And not only is it cheaper, but it actually comes with things that some of the more expensive wireless systems don't, like wired lav mics and a charging case. If you just need a single inexpensive wireless mic for vlogging and you're not worried about the missing features, the single lav version is a great value wireless lav kit in terms of quality and performance for what you pay. Stepping up to the two lav kit is still a bargain when compared to something like the Rode Wireless Go 2 if you can live within its limitations. But it's not the only dual microphone kit out there for 200 bucks these days. There are a few others and I have some of them here and I'll have reviews of those live in the coming weeks and maybe a comparison of some kind at the end of it all. But that is it for the Godox MoveLink M2. What wireless microphone system do you currently use? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. 
Drop a comment down below if you have any questions or if there's anything you want me to test with these. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.